Um, well, I'm quite honoured to open this exhibition, um, this exciting exhibition, Iconic Australian Houses and the Home and Architecture Program. This word iconic is often used and I think perhaps overused a little, but when you see the exhibition up there, I would say that most of the, not all of them, in my, in my humble opinion, <laughs> are worthy of that title. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We're all here tonight because of our shared interest in design and the built environment. And Sydney's a great place to indulge in this passion. Um, this exhibition, as Mark has said, allows us a, a, is a year of activities, exhibitions, programs, Sydney Open, walks, tours, etc. And I think you'll find it pretty interesting because I've had a little look through the program. But now I want to talk about the curator of the exhibition, Karen McCartney. Um, Karen's two books about 20th century houses, which are the basis of this exhibition, um, are amongst the best-selling architecture publications in Australia. She's previously edited Murray Claire Lifestyle, was a founding editor of Inside Art, and is now editorial director of online, online retailer Temple and Webster. She has a great um, wealth of experience in design, art, and architecture, and one of the most refined eyes for style in Australia. And it's quite interesting because up there you'll see the uh, photographs which are rich in colour and texture of materials and then there are some models which are white, all white. And it looks pretty sharp. I think you'll be pleased. Um, perhaps it's her editorial background but Karen's interest is to take us behind the scenes. Having toured the exhibition already, I can attest that it brings her research to a new level, adding new material and showcasing spectacular and distinctive Australian homes. The exhibition includes the who's who of 20th century Australian architecture, Hugh Burick, Glenn Merkett, who's here, and Rick LaPastria, Robin Boyd, and the list goes on. What distinguishes this from other architectural exhibitions is the way which Karen draws an intimate portrait portrait of these houses, their design and building, and the experience of living in them. And you'll get that from the 40 minute um, video which accompanies the exhibition. So do that in stages. So I do a little um, statistical analysis. The houses in, included come from New South Wales 13, Victoria 11, Queensland 4, Western Australian 1 and ACT 1. I'm pleased that there are a couple of female architects included. They come from the second book. The first book had no females. Um, six of the architects are into uh, immigrants and were educated overseas and I think that's part of our experience that it's to be Australian is not necessarily to be born in Australia or to be educated in Australia but we owe a lot to the immigrants and by the way on that there's another fabulous exhibition up there about the Chinese in Australia which I found extremely compelling you should all have a look at that too the houses, except for the one apartment that's in the um, exhibition, are all in gorgeous, idyllic settings with grand bushland. And I remember when we were first married, we used to spend our weekends going and looking for the ideal site to build our own house. And that's what people did then. I mean, you could almost by whole tracts of land in St Ives and various places and the smart people lived in the eastern suburbs but Harry wasn't impressed by that because the, the land wasn't big enough and finally we found our site 
our own house in Kalara, not the Rose Seidler house. Harry's parents lived there at that stage. It's rather interesting, actually, that I grew up in Warunga, which is more or less just around the corner from where that house was, and we all knew about this notorious house and went and had little looks at it. And at that stage, I had no idea I'd end up <laughs> marrying the architect. <laughs> but I took it. I took it and I studied architecture and I became the partner and we built our own house together, that's acknowledged. And, <laughs> <laughs> and it's a fabulous house and I still live there. We've been there 46 years and nothing has changed. There's been no alterations, no additions, the furniture's original and every day I enjoy it better well, not better, but as much, and it's fabulous. And I think that the houses you see upstairs all show that, that common affinity that people love them and they should be kept as they are. I mean, I know people's situations change and technology changes. Yes, I do have a computer there now and I have had a new refrigerator. <laughs> and managed to fit in a flat screen TV so you didn't upset the uh, cabinetry. But I think it's a big shame when people alter lovely houses. They should stay true to their time and they should be preserved as such. Now what else would I, oh, I've got here, I was given these notes you see. Uh, <laughs> The Rose side of the house, well, I never lived there, but my mother, my parents-in-law lived there, and they were very proud of their son, and my mother-in-law was a keen gardener, and she loved the house, and my father-in-law, I think he loved it too, but he was somewhat perplexed by everything. <laughs> But that is what brought Harry to Australia. And, and Mark mentioned earlier Francis Greenway. And I like to tell the story that Francis Greenway, who was known to be a little bit uh, critical and stubborn and everything, he came to Australia as a prisoner on a prison ship exported from England and, be and was a very good architect in England and my husband was also exported from England on a prison ship and sent to Canada and I think there's a big parallel between the two. <laughs> Harry used to love reading about Francis Greenway and he'd come and say look what he did, he fought it and he, he criticised this and he felt very much bonded with him. So I think I've said just about every thing that I wanted to say, but viva, viva the uh, Sydney Living Museums and this exhibition. Congratulations to Karen and all of you. I hope you enjoy the exhibition. Thanks for coming.